I'm starting to think I might have gone a little overboard with the stitches. Oh no. Um. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Kara and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be coloring a piece from my coloring book, but which one will be my victim? You. This is the one. <laughs> And I am so happy I made these pages perforated because I needed that today. So if you saw the title of the video, you already know what's going on. Plus there is a little hint at the beginning of the video as well. We're going to be tearing this drawing up and stitching it back together again. I thought that this would be a fun little Halloween type of a piece. And I have done this before with a previous drawing. But the first thing I did was mark out where I wanted my tears to go, which I did not do with my previous torn drawing. And my thought process was I could take the scissors and kind of like cut away a little bit to make cleaner tears. That didn't work. I just wasted my time here and it made my drawing a little bit more rough at the end, but it's fine. I kind of like the look of it. Um, but here she is all in pieces. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Don't panic. We're stitching her back up. We're, we're going to do some magic here. L look at this. Look at this. She's all stitched up. My idea was to make her into a zombie girl, so that's what we're doing today. And so I'm making her skin blues and purples and desaturated earthy tones. That's the color scheme I went for. And while I am coloring her face, you can see some of the rough edges where I took the scissors initially. And that's what I was talking about where it was a waste of time because I tried to tear the pages along the edges, but I didn't cut with the scissors deep enough. So the tears just went wherever they wanted. This paper is a thicker cardstock, so when it came to actually stitching the pages up, I used this little nail tool that I have that's really sharp, and I just kind of stabbed teeny tiny little holes all throughout the page, so that way I could easily get my smallest little sewing needle up and through the holes. It took a long time, I'm not gonna lie, the stitching took me two hours to do. And I know you're looking at this and you're thinking, how did it take you two hours? I don't know, I, I don't know. <laughs> but it did, and I love doing this little stitching idea. If anybody else wants to try it, I highly recommend. It's so much fun, and it adds a little bit of texture to your drawing. Of course, you can only do the stitching technique in certain cases, like for zombie girls or for maybe characters who have injuries of some sort. You could even do it for clothing, honestly. I mean, I used the stitches for her clothing as well. I don't know, but I have to ask you all, if you were to do this technique with stitching the pages up again, what would you end up creating with it? I mean, you guys already know my answer. I've done two zombie girls with this method, and I... Don't think this will be the last one. Anywho, at this moment, I had no idea what I wanted to do for her hair or clothing color, so I decided to color in the stars in the meantime, just to figure things out. Um, I did eventually reach out to my friend Threadwing, as, as well as some other friends of mine, and Threadwing suggested a apple green color. Um, I think it ended up becoming more apple green, but I wanted more sage. Uh, in the end, I really like the color that her hair ended up being. You'll see it here in a minute. And I ended up using green in multiple areas of the drawing just to kind of tie that color into the piece more. If you really pay attention to me and my drawings, I am a huge balance fanatic. I need balance in a piece. So my colors tend to balance each other out in one way or another. In this case, because I have green hair, I used the green in her clothes as well. You can see here I'm using the stitch to my advantage and I'm making it look like she has a stitched corset. So the corset is going to be purple and it's also going to be the green. Now I did realize later uh, with the purple color it was very very close to her purple in the skin because it was the exact same colors. So I had to go over that later with some sparkles just to differentiate it a little bit. The one bad thing about traditional art and before anybody who does digital comes at me, I do both digital and traditional. I'm just saying the one bad thing about traditional art is there is no undo button. That means that if you make a mistake, you kind of have to either work with it or entirely start over. And more often than not, I try to work with it in one way or another. 
like for example, the stitches on her face. I was not actually happy with how the paper tore there or what I decided to do there, but I made it work and I think she looks pretty alright at the end. Anyways, moving on because I do want to talk about the black clothes that I gave her. So I was really debating on doing different colors for all portions of her outfit and I did it. I used two different shades of black or gray in this case because I never use full true black in a piece but I used more of a cool gray and then I used a neutral gray and I think it gave this a really cool effect. It's really subtle so it's not distracting which is exactly what I wanted because I thought it would be too busy if it were too too much or like too different but I think I found like that perfect sweet spot. Honestly, I did want the blue black to be a little bit more blue, but I didn't have the markers. Or I probably did. I just didn't want to get up to get them, so I just used what I had on my bed already. Uh, yes, I still record these videos in my bed. Fight me. It's comfortable. It's a large space. I, I got space to work with, you know? Now I am adding the sparkles, and this is what I was talking about earlier with the corset purple being very close to the purple I used in her skin. And to combat this, I just added sparkles. A lot of sparkles. I mean, a, a lot. Anyway, <laughs> onto the background, I decided to use different variations of yellow to color in that circle behind her. Um, I was going to use a different color because of the stars, but whatever. Here's the final result. Overall, I am so incredibly happy with how she turned out and I hope you all like her as well. I do want to make note, sorry if I sounded a little off during this video, I did have COVID, I'm slowly getting over it now and I'm feeling better, but yeah, my throat's still a little messed up from that. If you are interested in the coloring book, it is still available for purchase, I will leave a link in the description down below. And I don't know what video I'm going to do next, but whatever it is, I will see you all in the next one. Bye! Bye-bye, bye-bye.